your harvest records, you need to have um, yields of each crop <coughs> from each field you're harvesting. And you should have your harvest date, um, your storage records, you need a bin ID number, um, lot numbers, and sales receipts for your... And, I mean, this is going to vary between operations. Obviously, if you're growing vegetables, I'm not sure what your experiences have been, but I haven't seen lot numbers used frequently. No, not at all. Like farm market scale. No. no. But a lot number, it... It's very important um, for larger operators to use because this is again an example of the traceability. So if you're selling something to someone with a receipt, you've got the lot number and the lot number it can be specific to your operation, but I mean generally they incorporate your date, date of harvest, um, your product, the amount of product you you know had from that field, your field number, your bin number, where was it stored? Um, and the invoice number, and maybe your buyer, you know, so I think I'm confusing things a bit. Brian, could you example the lot numbers? Uh, or? I try to simplify it in all cases to feel like yeah. the first letter of the crop, use the Julian calendar, okay. and whatever your record keeping system is over and above that, everything has to trace back to yeah. or from that lot number. And everyone has their own way of setting it up. Mm -hmm. I, I just personally think, I'm not sure what it is, but the, the simplest, easiest yeah, way for anything is yeah. the Julian count. Yeah. So oh. as an example, you know, you could say, I had a field of spring wheat harvested on Julian date. Two ten. Okay. <laughs> It's well, a lot of math. Dry summer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this no sourced real. back to maybe field number 27. Mm -hmm. And after that, maybe you sold it to you know whoever your sales individual is. We'll call him SW. That's spring week. We'll call him I don't know. So some kind of indication of, of where that went after it was sold. I, I would suggest that if you had SW210, whatever crop it was, yeah, yeah. that it takes you right back to your seat mm -hmm. and it ends up on your bill of lading and it takes you right through to your customer, especially if you're not selling that current market. And well, then you right. have total traceability and income. Because yeah. you know that if you sold the spring wheat from field 27, you know, we can go back and find out what did you do in field 27, when did you do it, what did you apply, what was happening last year, you know? And if your yields are not what they should be, why is that, right? Like, so it allows us, and I mean, it's wonderful to assume that everybody is telling the truth all the time. You know, you really need to make sure that you're selling what you say you're selling. If you have someone with a food allergy or who's chemically sensitive, you know, and you're selling them something that's <coughs> organic, you know, it's not just deceptive, it can be very harmful. And so it really is, we all need to take responsibility for that. And I think everybody, you know, tries to do that. I think every now and then something, you know. Yeah, it, I think um, what you were just saying, that comes up sometimes in buffer zones when mm -hmm. people say, well, you know, what do I need? And every farm is different, but you have to feel very comfortable with the buffer zone that you are yeah. Mm -hmm. The inspector may say, well, I recommend this, but you also have to feel very comfortable with that. And you're the one who knows your field best, so if you know that there's going to be a spray drift issue or, you know, you're really close to the road, um, you're going to have, you should have confidence that your buffer zones are, and you should be proactive, you know, you should plant trees, contact people, you need to do all those things for your own security as well, you know. Um, yeah, so lot numbering. You know, even in a smaller operation, it's not a bad idea. You can go back and find out. It's it's a it's a traceability. Okay. So sales. Um, Jamie and I have a very small market garden, and uh, we sell at the farmers market. And sometimes um, I have been on farms where people have said, oh, "I don't keep records. I'm sorry, I just can't." And you know, you sort of go, "Okay, uh, well, can I see your sales records?" Oh yeah, I've got those. They're over here. You know, so I mean, records aren't, 
I think people have the impression that, I mean, records are things you should be keeping for your own, you know, management of your own site. Here, you know, we're just listing our crop. We're listing, you know, what kind of unit do I sell them in. I sell radishes in a bunch of eight. Um, I sell them for about a dollar, I guess. And uh, how many did I sell on each farm market day? Um, certainly, there are people who are very busy when they get to the market. They don't know exactly how many radishes they sold. My market's really quiet, so it's really easy for me to trace that. Make an estimate, you know. I think the easiest way for farm markets, my experience is you count before you go, yeah. Yeah. and then it's what you it's what you, what you bring back, bring back because it, you know, it's too difficult. To it is, and I mean, if you missed a week, well, think back and make a guess, and just put a little star. And let us know that that's you know, because we we understand everybody makes mistakes, but you need to. Sh there are ways of showing us that you are keeping those records, you know. Also, and if you have a sheet made up before you go yeah. with the price and exactly. the unit, it's easy Check to go. Just, you can just put a little mark, something five, and then cross it, and, you know, it doesn't take a second. And this can save a lot of time for you, too. So you want something that's going to work for your own operation. Um, definitely. <laughs>